So you guys, what, what happened to the whole my body, my choice thing? You know, the very people that say my body, my choice are the very ones that are telling you your body, not your choice. Why? Because if you don't get the you know what put in you today, they say that you are harming other people's beside yourself. You're harming others. So it shouldn't be your body, your choice. But what they don't get is the very ones that don't think it should be your body, your choice are the very ones that believe in my body, my choice as far as something else goes. Like if there is a living being inside of their body, which is a, another life, another body that doesn't have a choice, well, the one that has that living being inside them gets to choose if they end its life or not because it's their body, their choice. Does that make any sense to you? Now, however you feel about getting the you know what today, that's up to you. I don't believe it's the mark of the beast. I've never said it was and I'm still not going to say it is. I think they're preparing us for something. They want to prepare people for something, right? Receiving whatever it is that they say you receive. And if you don't receive whatever they say to receive, then they're not going to let you in the marketplace. They're not going to let you go buy or sell, right? You can't go to work. You can't receive any type of services, groceries, whatever. It's leading to that, isn't it? That's what it seems, right? And in a lot of areas, that's where the demanding you either prove you got the you know what or you're not you're not welcome here. You're not allowed in here because they see you as a walking virus, right? A friend of mine sent me a couple videos to watch and uh I told him I'll go watch them when I get a chance. And one of them was really long. I didn't get to finish that one yet, but the other one was just like maybe five or so minutes. In fact, I'll share it with you guys in my description box. And however you feel about it, that's up to you. So if you wanna watch it, cool, if not. But I do believe it's choice. I don't look at people that get the you know what put in them. And I don't look down at them. I don't think that they lost their salvation if they're believers or anything. You know, I mean, it just doesn't measure up. And I don't believe in losing your salvation for something you do to your body. Because whatever this stuff is, it goes into your body. And there's all kinds of different, you know, points of view on it. I heard people say it changes your RNA, DNA, all that. You know, um, I don't know the evidence of that, you know, but I, I know one thing for myself. I don't want it. That's my choice. But if other people have gotten it, that's their choice as well. But I don't believe what you put in your body is going to make your spirit leave you because that's where you would lose your salvation, right? The spirit in you is what saves you. Getting a new born spirit, getting a new spirit put in you. The light of life enters into you, out of darkness into light. He lives in your spirit. You're one spirit with him, right? So what you put in your body will make his spirit leave you? I don't believe so. But what about the scripture that says you gotta treat your body like, like a temple? Well, yeah, yeah. But how many people do it? And it doesn't say treat it like a temple or else the, the spirit's gonna leave your temple. It just means good to your, be good to your body. But those very ones, they drink tons of alcohol, smoke cigarettes, on and on it goes, right? Don't eat healthy don't exercise so we're all hypocrites in a way but I don't believe what you put in your body is going to make the spirit leave you so I don't think you're losing your salvation but you know what that you're not getting today is my friend that sends me this video of this uh, this Orthodox Bishop man he's calling people out especially those that have 501 C3 ministries it seems because it seems like those that have 501c3 ministries, their voices, they're not talking about the things that are going on today. They're not talking about what is going on right now. They might say, oh, hang in there. You know, we know there's a virus going on. 
you guys, and you might be at home and all that, but you know, rely on the Lord, trust in him. And of course, I believe in trusting and relying on the Lord too, right? No weapon formed against me can conquer me, but they're not talking about this stuff. They're not talking about the people that are choosing not to do it. They're not encouraging them because they don't want to f lose their 501c3 status. What is 501c3? That's where these ministers don't have to pay taxes on the money that they're getting, right? They're tax exempt from pay paying federal income taxes. So they don't have to render Caesar's things to Caesar's and God things to God. They just keep it. And, and if they do that, fine. But guess what? That means if, if you're under 501c3, then you better say the things that they say you can say. Otherwise, we'll make you... We'll, we'll, you'll, we'll take away that 501c3, right? Now there's things on YouTube. I have to be careful about how I speak on YouTube and all that, but I don't have no 501c3 and my channel's not monetized. And if you do see commercials on any of my videos, that's because YouTube is putting commercials on people's videos, whether they like it or not. And they're not paying them for it either. So YouTube's not giving me anything for the commercials that they're forcing on my videos, right? But you have to be cautious about how you say things. But I'm not losing my tax-free exemption or status, you know, from it. No. We have to be cautious about what we say. You got to be cautious about the comments. If you have your comments open on your channel, I hope you're paying attention. Because if somebody's offended by the comments, they can report you and YouTube might put a strike against your channel. I already had a th strike threat. Or if you're t having certain content. That's why I call it the you know what? Because I'm being cautious about what's said. That way they can't read into it, you know, overly and, 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 and strike me. And then eventually I have no voice. But if these ministers that have their 501c3s, right? If they were to speak and, and that 501c3 got taken away because, hey, we don't approve of what you're saying. You're under our authority. We tell you what you can say and not. Well, guess what? They can still have a voice to speak. They can still get on YouTube and speak as long as they're cautious. But they don't want to lose their tax-free exemption. It's all about that 501c3 thing, right? And I'm not against 501c3, but what I don't like is... Some of these guys that were my favorite ministers before, favorite preachers to listen to, none of them are addressing the issues that are going on. There's very, very few. Maybe they got the you know what. And maybe they don't want to talk about the you know what at all or what people are going through, going through today. I mean, tch. there's some countries that have to go underground if they're believers in Christ because the persecution is incredible. You don't get to hear about what's going on. It's like all these ministers, they're just zipping their lip, right? Muting everything. Let's mute the word of God so we can keep up with our 501c3 C3 status. Muting the word of God for their 501c3 status. The love of money it's not money that's the root of all evil. It's that love or lust of money. It means so much to them that they won't even speak up anymore. Now, I'm not saying they need to give their opinion or tell their, their congregation, get the you know what or don't get the you know what. I'm not saying that. But they're just not even talking about it. They're not even trying to support people like, you know, whatever decisions you make, you know, we want to pray with you and and support you and give you encouragement today. It's just, I don't see it happening. It's so sad. A lot of these ministers were up there like Luke Skywalker, walking around on stage preaching as if, wham, 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 they're just fighting off the enemy with their lightsaber, right? But now, when real trouble comes, those ones that are throwing their lightsabers around at invisible things, well, now the real trouble comes, and what are they doing? They're silent. They're not those warriors you thought they were. It's crazy. Anyway, I'm going to leave that video. 
I'm going to leave that video in the description box. And if you want to watch it, watch it. You know, I just think it's pretty cool what this guy had, had said on YouTube. And it's very bold. I'm sure I'm, I'm surprised the video is still even there. Who knows? It might get taken down. Who knows? So if you see this video sometime in the future and you go to that description box and say, hey, that video, it's not playing anymore. Well, don't be surprised. But the dude was very bold. And he calls out these ministers that aren't speaking up. Right. He's, he's saying, you guys are betrayers, man. And a lot of them, they, they really are. It's like everybody's showing their true colors, right? It's, it's crazy. But um, what do you think about that, you guys? What do you think about the hypocrisy? The very ones. I want you to think about this. Whether you're for the you-know-what or not, I just want you to think about this. The very ones that say, my body, my choice, and they stand up for the rights of those that say, my body, my choice, and I have the right what's in my body, whether it stays there or I kill it and take it out. But then they don't want you to have your rights about what you do, what goes into your body. I call that double standard and I call that hypocrisy. And for anybody that knows what's right, what is truth and just, but they side with that kind of thinking like so many cowards are doing today, siding with that kind of thinking because they don't want to lose whatever, their popularity, their position, whatever it may be. Well, that's what you call apostates, apostasia in Greek, apostasy. They know what's right. They know the truth but they side with the darkness and the lie. So what? So that they can keep their positions, their status, even if it's 501c3, it even goes that far. Anyway, think about it, you guys. Pray about it and start strengthening one another. You know, this is what the body of Christ is for. Iron sharpening iron. Don't forsake gathering together if you can have a chance because that's important, you guys. Don't sit all alone, whether it's once a month, once a week, whatever day you want. Just try to get around others, even if you think they're not out there. Come on, reach out. Reach out. They're out there. There's more of us than them. The devil, he got one third of the angels. We got two thirds on our side, right? We don't want to be afraid. We don't need to be afraid. They want you to fear. And the ones that work for them, the media, they want you to fear. But come on, you guys, know who you are and know who is for you. Two-thirds on our side, right? That's pretty good. Angelic armies, that's pretty powerful. All right, you guys, God bless you. I hope this message has been good for you, and I will see you in the next video.